Hi guys, it's Carol. How you doing? I realize I haven't put up a video in a long time. I've been working on that social security video. I want to have good information. I want to double check that it's correct. So hopefully my next video is going to be on living on social security. But since I hadn't put up one in a long time and I haven't been anywhere to film anything like our quirky things, I decided I'd tell you about the worst wedding ever. It was mine. <laughs> Now, first of all, I have to tell you, I got married when I was 18, but my mental age was probably 10. Uh, seriously, <laughs> I was so immature. I had lived such a weird, sheltered life. I grew up in this dysfunctional family where kids were to be seen and not heard. You did what you were told and you didn't question anything. You just said, when they said jump, you said how high. Um, we lived very isolated. Anyway, just realized I came from a weird family. And uh, socially and mentally, I was way behind. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, I was smart. I was a member of National Honor Society. I, I wasn't, uh, you know, learning impaired, but I was just emotionally way impaired. So, anyway, so I graduated on a Friday night. I got married on Saturday night. <laughs> no, I wasn't pregnant, but everybody thought I must be. It was an escape. I could get out of that house by getting married and having my own home, and so I didn't realize at the time it was an escape, but a teacher wrote me a note and said she understood I needed to uh, get away from the life I had <laughs> and start a new one, and she understood why I was getting married the day after graduation. Okay, so here I am, this shy, introvert, don't talk to anybody. If somebody says do something, you do it, person. And I had this boyfriend. Um... He wanted a church wedding. I did not. I just wanted to go get married. But he wanted a church wedding. And so, uh, actually, his mother wanted a church wedding. So, and, and they were Southern Baptist. And, you know, it didn't count with her if you weren't married in the Southern Baptist church. So, we go to see the minister. And I tell him, I just want to get married in your office. Oh, also, I did not have any communication skills. <laughs> This boy I married, neither one of us had communication skills at all. Okay, so we go. We had not discussed it. We went to see the minister, and I said, I just want to get married in your office. I want my mom to be there, and my fiancé can have somebody. But, you know, I just I want a very small wedding in your office. Well, my fiancé pipes up, well, besides his mom and dad, he needs his three brothers and three sister-in-laws and a couple of aunts and uncles and some cousins to all be able to come. And the minister said, well, I can't fit that many people in my office. Okay, fine. So I said, well, we can get married in the sanctuary, but uh, I want it to be small and intimate. Could we have the, I'm sorry, my dogs. If I get the camera out, that's cute for the dogs to start barking, fussing, whatever. Whoops, sorry. I'm keeping this real. I'm not editing that out. <laughs> anyway. I, I told the minister, the sanctuary was huge to me, and I said, how about if we just have the lights on at the altar, I'll have some candles, but I want the rest of the lights off so it doesn't seem like an empty cave. Oh, he thought that was a wonderful idea. Okay, so that's what we did. I rented this candelabra from the local florist, had four tapers in it, and some flowers in the middle, which were artificial. And I got married in 1972. In 1972, artificial flowers were hard plastic. This is about what I could afford. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so yes, we'll have a very intimate wedding in the chapel. We'll have the lights off so it doesn't seem like a huge cave. And he can invite his immediate family and I can have my mom. I had four friends. I really wanted them to come too. So my mom and four friends, that's five people. I was assuming he'd have about five people, or ten, because he has, you know, six <laughs> brothers and sisters-in-law. And, okay, 
So, the wedding comes. I'm getting ready to go to the church. My dad tells me uh, he's not going to go. Well, that was fine with me. I didn't care. I did not have a relationship, a good relationship with him. I was, well, I didn't want him there. But uh, he had been gone from home forever, but he had come back home. And uh, I said, fine, we're having the reception here at the house, so please just be gone when my friends come. <sighs> my mom had a little, probably 900 square foot house. Yes, we were having the reception there because I was having my mom and four friends and he could have some people, but you know, not very many. It's good. This is gonna be a little intimate affair. <laughs> so, I had ordered a cake. There was a lady in town that made cakes and I, I had a, th a three-tier wedding cake because I wanted the wedding cake. I wanted the wedding dress, I wanted the wedding cake. Uh, and I went to her house she, she made them at home, and I told her what I wanted, and I wanted the roses and the leaves and everything to be solid white, the whole thing to be white. She thought that was the weirdest thing she'd ever heard of. Don't you want the roses to be some kind of color, the leaves to be green? No, I just want a solid white cake. She tried and tried and tried to talk me out of that, but okay, got what I wanted. Okay, so we had the cake at, at the house. My dad was there. We were going to make this punch with strawberries and well, I don't remember what else. I had napkins printed that said my name and his name and the date. And I had some paper plates and, you know, plastic forks for our cake for my 10 or 15 people. Okay. My dad's not going to go. So my sister and brother-in-law drove me to the church. I gather. I don't remember how I got there. <laughs> I was so stressed by then. I don't know how I got there. But, oh, my sister, since we were having this wedding, he wanted his brother to be his best man, so I had my sister be my maid of honor. No other attendance. Okay. Go to the church. Now, you go in these, there's like three doors that go into like a foyer, and then there's two doors that go into the sanctuary on either side. And then there's stairs to go up to the balcony on either side, out of, off of that foyer. So my mom and I went halfway up the stairs to the balcony and sat there on the stairs waiting for this wedding to start. Had we practiced this? No. Had we even talked about how it's going to happen? Uh, no. <laughs> I paid some lady to play the theme song from Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, you know, otherwise, otherwise, no planning because this is just going to be me and, you know, 10 people or so. Okay. I could hear the doors opening. Those three doors at the front of the church that go into the foyer. I could hear these doors open and open and open. And I, I said to my mom, where are all these people going? What else is going on right now? We didn't know. <laughs> okay. People kept coming in those doors. I couldn't see them because I was halfway up the stairs. I just could hear the door open and shut. Okay. So, um, my fiance comes and he says, who's supposed to light the candles? Because I had those four tapers. I don't know. Have your best man do it. Okay. Then he comes back and he's, and I had told, my mom had told him her dad didn't come. I wasn't gonna walk down that aisle by myself. And at that time I'd never heard of the mom walking down, down the aisle, that's what I should have done. Uh, and my mom told him, I don't think she'll go in there by herself. <laughs> so my fiance comes and he walks me down to the altar at the beginning of the wedding. Okay, I ha my mom made this dress. It was beautiful, it really was. It was um, <laughs> At the, of course, the dogs are going to bark. Timmy, come here and leave Andy alone. Um, I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay. So, this was 1972. I don't know when the film Romeo and Juliet was made that came out during that the 70s. My town got movies kind of late. But, you know, we... That year we'd all seen Romeo and Juliet and oh my gosh, it was so romantic. And so I wanted a Juliet dress. My mom made it. It had a, a scoop neck bodice, probably like that. Long, kind of puffy sleeves, not really. And it was midriff 
and it went down into this big skirt kind of not big skirt it, it, it was don't think big wedding dress um she worked at a surplus store that got leftover stuff and they had this bolt of fabric i think it was really meant to make uh, sheer draperies out of we got that like for next to nothing you know like 10 cents a yard or something but it was white it was it was kind of sheer that worked so she made a satin uh, bodice and skirt and then over the top she put this lace I, I went to the next big town bought the lace fabric for it and the sleeves and then the skirt um, was that drapery material over the satin it was it, it it was super cheap I mean super cheap but it turned out really pretty my mom sewed our clothes for years she was a wonderful seamstress so she made my wedding dress it was beautiful for my veil, I made this little Juliet cap out of white satin and I and the lace that matched this. And I sewed pe <laughs> sewed seed pearls on it. It was really pretty too. And then the veil just, you know, went down the back. Like Juliet. I was Juliet. My hair was long and dark and parted in the middle like in the 70s. Okay. So I had this on. Go down there. It's dark, except for right at the altars kind of lit up. But I could see, in the dark, I could see all these people. All those people coming in the doors came to my wedding. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> we get down to the altar. Oh, I hired this crazy woman photographer who was also cheap. <laughs> and I told her, I did tell her how it was going to be dark, blah, blah, blah. So she said, okay. What will do after you say the vows um, before you walk back up the aisle? We'll turn have somebody turn the lights on, and I'll take pictures there at the altar, and then you can leave before you walk back down the aisle. Okay, fine with me because I was having ten or fifteen people there. Okay, so we go, we say our vows. That was fine, and then somebody turned the lights on so she could take the photographs. And there was probably a hundred people. I mean, there was a lot of people there. His mother and dad had invited every relative, no matter how distant, every person they ever knew in their life. Um, I had put a, a wedding announcement in the newspaper only so I could cut out that picture with the wedding announcement to put in my wedding book that my sister-in-law gave me. It wasn't an invitation to come to my wedding. It just stated that we were getting married at such and such time, blah, blah. And I put, no invitations will be sent. I thought that meant, you're not invited, stay home. <laughs> it, I told you I was 18 going on 10. Okay, anyway, I didn't mean it to be, hey, y'all come to my wedding. But there were some of my teachers, there were um numerous friends from high school that i i was in this real tight small group with four other girls but then you know i knew other people it was those other people that also came i don't know maybe there was 150 there was a lot of people i'm shy introverted wanted my mother there <laughs> and that's about it my four friends if we were going to have a big wedding Turn, they turn the lights on, and I see all of these people sitting there in the pews. And do you know what I did? I looked at my fiance. I looked at all those people. I was a nervous wreck. And threw my toes up down the front of my white Juliet dress. I did. I just upchucked all down the front of my dress at the altar in front of all these people. <laughs> I was horrified. So I ran around the piano through this door to go to the bathroom, <laughs> thinking, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm never going to be seen again. I'm mortified. Go into the ladies' restroom. Here comes my fiancé, the minister, and the best man, all in the bathroom with me while I'm up chucking in the toilet. Now, I have to tell you, I'd never been in a bathroom with a man before. And here were three men in this bathroom with me. <laughs> I was just mortified over the whole thing. 
I was throwing up thinking, there are men in the bathroom with me. <laughs> okay, so got paper towels, you know, those brown paper towels, got them wet, cleaned my face off, wiped down the front of my dress. And the minister said, well, we have to go back out there and do the pictures. And I was like, uh, no, no way. I, I'm not going out there. I'm, I'm done. No, you have to go have the pictures made. You'll want pictures of this later. So we all go back out to the altar where all those people are sitting there probably thinking, oh, she's pregnant. <laughs> she's got morning sickness. Go out. My little <laughs> Juliet cap thing is kind of crooked. <laughs> My dress has got throw up down the front. I'm flushed because I'm embarrassed <laughs> and nervous. Uh, we, the lady took three pictures and then that was over with and we left. And so my, my, my new husband then walked me back down the aisle. We got in his car and I told him, I'm not going home to the reception. Yes, you have to. You can't do your mother this way. So we go to my mom's little 800, 900 square foot little house, go in and all these people come. I intended for my sister, my four friends, and my mom, and then he could have a few people come to my mom's house for this reception. No, all of those people came. I mean, this was a tiny house. <laughs> so I went in, we cut the cake, I gave my new husband a bite, I had a bite, I ran to the bedroom and changed my, uh, to the going away dress I had made. <laughs> went out and said, we're leaving. <laughs> and his friends were saying, no, y'all can't leave yet. We haven't decorated the car. I told him, I'm getting in the car and leaving. If you want to decorate it, you better beat me out there. <laughs> oh, I was mortified. I was so mortified. I, I just could not believe all those people there. And then I threw up in front of everybody right at the altar in this church. <sighs> That's pretty much how the whole wedding, I mean, the, my whole marriage went. <laughs> it started off like that and went downhill from there. <laughs> we, he was a nice, nice boy. I was a nice person, but we had no business being married to each other. We had no business being married at 18. This is the honest truth. My mother, bless her heart, I, she had such a horrible life. And I think by the time it got to me, she just did not have any patience left. She didn't teach me a thing. I knew how to boil water and make tea by putting tea leaves in a metal ball. I knew how to do that. I did not know how to cook anything else. Not one thing. She never once tried to teach me. One time, that fiance and I had tried to make a tuna casserole for her while she was at work. She came home and was livid because the kitchen was a mess. I told her, we're going to clean it up. Oh, she was livid. The tuna casserole went in the trash. I was banished from the kitchen. My feelings were hurt. <laughs> but she never taught me how to cook anything. Here I was, got married, moved 110 miles away, had a husband, did not know how to cook a darn thing, and he didn't either. <laughs> oh my gosh. But anyway, that's the story of my dream wedding. <laughs> my, my Romeo and Juliet dream wedding with me throwing up all over the place. <laughs> oh my. Should I ever get married again? It will be me, him, and a minister or something. That's it. <laughs> Actually, I think once was enough for me. <laughs> Bye, guys.